reading this morning is from the first letter of John, starting at the beginning, the first verse of the first chapter. This which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we, we have seen with our eyes, which we have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest and we saw it and testified to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And, and we are writing this, that our joy may be complete. <clears throat> this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing this to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. The righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
What a blessing. Thank you, Suzanne. The second lesson this morning comes to us from the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to John. And this is the final portion of this account. It was still the first day of the week, which was Easter morning for us. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called the twin, one of the 12 wasn't with the other disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, today, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing, you will have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What would you have said had you been there with the disciples that week? There's a lot that, are, that is left out of this account. We don't know everything that they said or did what they thought, we just don't know. But John records these events in order for us to have something, something tangible that we can hold that is based on more than just oral tradition. What would you have said? On that first Easter, the disciples were gathered in fear, having witnessed their teacher's gruesome death, having spent Saturday just numb, I, I'm guessing. John doesn't record it, none of the others do as well. We know from our readings last week that Mary and the other women had gone to the tomb. We know from the other accounts that Mary told the disciples that the tomb was empty. P 
Peter and John ran to the tomb and just to see for themselves. Because even though the women had told them, and in one account, Mary says, I have seen the Lord. That same account says, but they didn't believe her because it sounded like an idle tale. We are adherents, followers of a religious tradition that goes back nearly 2,000 years, that itself is based on a religious tradition that goes back several thousand years before that. So if we trace our lineage back to the time of, well, either Moses or Abraham and Sarah, or even before that, to the beginning of time, a lot of what we believe, we have heard from someone else. Someone else had to tell you at some point in your life about this God, about the existence of God. That was one of the things that was discussed in the philosophy class. Is there a God? How do you know? Can you prove it? What makes you so sure? Many of you have, have read uh, Bullfinch's mythology or know the work of Joseph Campbell, you, you heard stories about the Greek and Roman gods. You've heard about Ra and the Egyptians or the, the gods worshipped or followed in the Hindu tradition or others. What makes you so sure that our tradition, our understanding of God is the right one. At some point, your faith has to ask that question. One of the things that comes out of this reading from John's account is the disciples had a practical reason for being together on that first day, they were afraid. Association with Jesus could have put them in harm's way. And in fact, most of the original 12, according to tradition, only two or three of them lived to old age. They were afraid. And so they held on to each other because there are times in your life when you need that assurance, that blessed assurance that you're not in this alone. That's one of the things that we, we can find with confidence throughout the scriptures, Old and New Testament, is this understanding that we are in this together. That God, yes, may, God may speak to an individual. God may speak to a certain collection of people. But all of us, those on this Zoom call this morning, as well as everyone you know or have ever known, All of us are affected by this understanding that God is. But is that enough? On that first day, Jesus came to the disciples in that room and said, peace be with you. So I asked you this morning, do you feel peace? Because you're hearing this after a couple millennia of translations and interpretations and 
dissections and textual analysis and all the rest, historical analysis and different theologies. Do you feel peace in your heart? So Jesus says it again, peace be with you. This time he adds, so the Father has sent me, so I send you. What does that mean for us here in Boulder County or wherever you might happen to be watching this today? If we believe that God sent or came to us in the person of Jesus Christ, or Jesus the Christ. If we can accept that, do you then accept the second part of that statement? And so I send you. So that means that God is sending you, Judy, or Bob, or Don. God is sending you to do something. Do you believe that? Do you accept God's commission for you? Because that's what Jesus was doing in that moment. He was providing maybe physical evidence, maybe emotional evidence, maybe uh, spiritual evidence. Whatever he was doing, he said it twice. And it's an amazing thing. Do you believe that God has a purpose or a mission for you in this life? Now, to cement that statement that he had just made, so I am sending you, he adds, receive the Holy Spirit. Remember that this was the same Holy Spirit that breathed upon creation, according to Genesis. This was the same Spirit that announced that God was pleased with Jesus. The same Spirit that was with Jesus during his time in the desert. So what do we do with this spirit? Why, why should we care? Well, first Jesus says, here it is, receive it. <laughs> and then he says something that maybe you could accept this idea of that Jesus was sent here, that Jesus came to be with us, to remind us and to show us how that we might ourselves be brought into the presence of God. And it's, it's mind blowing what he says. He says, if you forgive anyone, they are forgiven. No exceptions, no qualifications, no, well, what about, no buts. If you don't forgive, they are not forgiven. Now, I don't know about you, but I am confident that I do not have, by my own volition, the strength to forgive anyone. There are people in my life, in my history, that if I don't see again on this side of the veil, that's just fine. And I'm pretty sure that there are some who, if they never saw me again, they would be equally pleased. But 
am I willing to say to God, you cannot forgive this person? I mean, think about that in your life. Who are you, who would you like to see condemned to the fires of hell? Who, you know, and, and, and we're not talking about, you know, mass genocide or, you know, things like that. We're talking about, can you forgive the person who denied you a promotion? Can you forgive the person who cut you off in traffic? Can you forgive the simple things? Because if we can't forgive the simple things, we sure as heck can't, can't forgive the big things. But while you're wrestling with that, consider that the people that you have hurt, the people that I have hurt, are likewise having to make that decision. Can someone say, I forgive Charles? It's not just, can I forgive, you know, Belinda, or can I forgive my brother, or can I forgive my neighbor? I have to be willing to say, can they forgive me? And that's what Jesus is, is doing in this upper room. But Thomas wasn't there. Thomas was, who knows where he was. Maybe he was getting food. Maybe he was, you know, had gotten separated and didn't know the address. I don't know. But for whatever reason, he wasn't there. And he said, unless I see for myself, I won't believe. I don't know if, you, if you've ever seen this painting before. This is uh, Caravaggio's painting called The Incredulity of St. Thomas. You see him, and, and sometimes we call him Doubting Thomas. But that is so unfair. Do you notice in this painting that it's not just Jesus and Thomas? There's two other people standing there. Now, Caravaggio never says who they are. I like to think it's Peter and John, but Caravaggio doesn't say. I mean, look at the intensity on their faces. But look at the compassion that Jesus shows. We call him Doubting Thomas. But according to tradition, Thomas, after Pentecost, made the journey to what we now call India. And there shared the gospel. And there he was martyred. So think about this, not just from Thomas, but from your own perspective. I want you to hear it as if Jesus is speaking to you. I'll use myself as an example, but I, I hope that you'll put your name in there. Charles wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But Charles replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nail, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Charles was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. The third time he said this, then he said to Charles, put your finger here, look into my hands, put your feet, your hand into my side, 
No more disbelief, but believe. Jesus doesn't chastise Thomas for his disbelief. But he offers Thomas a chance to experience him. Not just as a philosophy, not just as a religious tenet, not just as you know, a human encounter, but as a chance to strengthen his faith that God is capable of doing what God promises to do. Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly, that you might enter into the presence of God. The invitation is there. The gift has been given. The next breath you draw is drawing in the Holy Spirit. What will you do with that? Amen. Having heard the account of that first day, take the next step in your faith, in your life, in the kingdom of God with confidence that God, through the Holy Spirit, is with you. Go in peace and go with God. Amen. <laughs>